So here we are for uh, Max and Yana's wedding. Uh, they're just in the middle of doing a setup at the moment. Uh, Max and Yana are having their ceremony here at the Grand Hyatt, but also having their celebration, their venue at the Grand Hyatt also next door in what's called the residence. The convenience of doing that is that there's no downtime from one location to a next. They're also getting ready from here. So we'll be capturing all the pre-ceremony here in the uh, Grand Hyatt also. So it all makes it very com convenient, not only for access, but also for supplies and so forth. So for some food for thought, when you are planning a wedding, the, the less uh, transition you have between the two areas, the more that you'll be saving. So this is a, their pretty hooper here, and uh, we'll just go up and uh, see Yana now. So would I have to go down the reception? It's a 3315, perfect, thank you. Oh, my, turn around now, turn around. Oh my God, that is beautiful. Yeah. And it matches my dress. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. And look at your face, it's perfect. Yeah. I like it. Who did it? Nicole well, Gross. Perfect. Yeah. And that's all I need, that perfect, that's all I need. Okay. I don't want you to struggle. Let me help you. <laughs> Max would kill me. Would he not? Perfect. There you go. Wow. Oh, Lovely. Wonderful. Gorgeous. Is it gorgeous because you look stunning. Your eyes are incredible. So now we just finished with Yana. So we did all the preparations and so forth. Now generally we normally start with the groom because the groom arrived a little later and he's getting ready in the bridal suite. That's where they're also signing what they call the ketubah. So they're documents just before a Jewish ceremony. Documents need to be signed. So that's what's happening there. But you'll see that we've just finished here. The groom is merely just an elevator ride away. So it's all fairly condensed and very relaxed. There's no sort of running from one venue to another in order to get what we need. So it is important to note that if you can, try and keep the location from when you're getting ready closer together be it if it's not in a hotel because you might want to sort of have it somewhere closer to home or, or, or somewhere with some meaning, try and make the locations quite short, quite, the distance quite short purely because we'll be able to spend a lot more time with you as opposed to sort of sort of running there and then running somewhere else and, and it's time for your, that you're paying for. So just bear that in mind. Look out into the city, think about your wedding day. This is finally it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to introduce to you Casey. Casey's shooting uh, the groom today, Max. She, he's very fortunate to have uh, Casey here from Blumenthal. They're very relaxed. They approach the day quite easy um, and just make everybody feel quite at ease and getting the very best out of them naturally. Am I right? Thanks. <laughs> so what's happening next is that we're going to go down and get Yana and this part of the ceremony is called the Bedeckin. So this is where the groom sees his bride for the first time, then he places a veil over her head just to confirm that she's the one. They sign some documents and then they head down for the chuppah, for the ceremony. But I'd like you to introduce two ladies from A Lavish Affair. Your names are? Kate and Carly. And how's it been going so far? Very good, yeah. It's very lovely downstairs. Any hiccups at all? No, not as yet. Just waiting for the bride. That's Excellent. All. Yeah. That's all you're giving me? <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Dan from uh, Blumenthal Photography. Howdy. How are you? Everyone. Dan, do you want to give, tell them very quickly in a nutshell the sort of style and approach to the day? Sure. I mean, it's been pretty relaxed so far. Um, just really candid, just kind of shooting what's happening, really just kind of not setting too much up, using a lot of natural light and um, just kind of documenting it rather than setting it up to pose so it works well. Yeah. So if there's one pointer you could give to a bride that's getting married, what would it be? What would be the high, What would the one thing be in terms of preparation? Good hair and makeup. Um, just really enjoy the day, be relaxed and kind of those shots where they're relaxing and just having natural moments always look beautiful and they really look, they look back and go wow that was an amazing shot so just, yeah. just, just enjoying the day and interacting with, with the cup, you know, the people and just having a good time really. Yeah. yeah. I've got Marissa here from A Lavish Affair, and A Lavish Affair Extraordinaire uh, can take a, what can be quite mediocre or bland event and make it into something out of this world. Do you want to just give a brief summary as to what you've done for Max and Yana? Um, well today we've booked them into the residence, so the beautiful residence has a lovely courtyard with a lot of natural light. Um, we've put up a hooker 
for them to get married under and the guests can stay in one convenient location, have their pre-drinks in there and then move into the reception afterwards, which looks equally as lovely. Just the flower girl, then yeah. Olive, then me with parents, okay. then Jenya. Okay. Okay, so we've arrived at locations. The beauty about locations is it's literally a kilometre away from uh, the Grand Hyatt. So we've ducked down here. The beauty is that it's only a very small bridal party, so we can work very quickly. It was a much longer ceremony than we expected. It was close to 50 minutes. Uh, so we've come here. We're going to do some nice casual, natural shots, get the very best out of our couple in the short period of time. And remember, it's never about the quantity of time it's always about the quality of time and the quality of the shots so you can have four hours and not get very much and yet only have half an hour and get some amazing results so don't think you need three or four hours for uh, photography and videography you actually don't as long as you keep it within the vicinity of where you are and you've got an idea in your head of what sort of landscape and sort of architecture you want you really only need an hour an hour and a half at the very most and that way you won't feel exhausted, you'll feel nice and relaxed, you have a later ceremony, therefore you're not up at 6 a.m., you can get up a little bit later and just sort of bring that all forward so the whole thing feels a little bit more relaxed and natural. So it's a good point to keep in mind. So we've just finished up service for entree. As you can see, everybody behind us are enjoying themselves. What you'll notice, especially about uh, the residents here, you'll see that there's no big blaring bright lights. Now, Max and Yana have gone to the extraordinary length of creating some ambience and mood in the room. The last thing you want is a supplier coming in and putting up some big bright lights to show that we're filming or photographing and flashing and getting in everyone's face. You want to make sure that you maintain this sort of atmosphere where it's fairly intimate, people are able to talk, the music's not dominating so it's not too loud and overpowering where people are yelling at each other over the tables. So it's really nice to set the mood. They're about to do a set of speeches. Now the speech is going to be fairly unique. Max ide Max's idea was Whilst the speech was about to happen, he'd have hold music for the guests. So he wanted to create an experience for the guests. So just before someone was going about to speak, he'll have a, a violinist sort of just playing some music in the background up to the speaker, then follow them to the lectern and then pull off and then the speaker will continue and then wait and that will happen with each speaker. The speeches aren't consecutive, they are broken up, but it's really nice, those really subtle details that Max and Yana have done just to make it that little bit different so you don't need a massive budget in order to create a really unique experience for your family and guests so just bear that in mind. So that was our night, it was, uh, it's uh, close to 10 o'clock now, so um, after food they had many, many speeches. Now you'd probably want to think about the structure of your speeches and how you sort of set it all out, whether you have your speeches consecutive or whether you have them broken up. Uh, a fair chunk of their venue was taken up with speeches, which was quite beautiful and very, very touching, but realise that you are paying by the hour and you have got the function only for a certain period of time and there are so many other elements that need to come in play in order for a function to be successful. So do bear that in mind. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. Next one will be in Fiji and um, we'll see you then.